All right, guys, welcome to Binomial Radical Expressions. Uh, the essential understanding for today is you can combine like radicals using properties of real numbers, okay? Simplify before combining like radicals. So uh, like the previous section, if you, can, if you can break the radical down, simplify before um, you, you start combining them. A couple of properties here. Uh, to use the distributive property to add or subtract like radicals, they have to have the same radicand and the same index. And if you have a times the nth root of x plus b times the nth root of x, you can combine those. You'd have a plus b times nth root of x. And here, if you're subtracting, okay, you can just subtract a minus b times nth root of x. Okay, be careful. This is not the uh, same thing as addition. So that's what we're going to look at. Combine like radicals. We can use properties of real numbers. And keep in mind that try to simplify first. And we'll see examples of both. On the first slide, what we're going to look at is this, the sums and difference rules. It's a pretty easy rule to follow, so we're actually going to show you two that don't work. Uh, so what is the simplified form of each expression? So here's that distributive property. We have 3 uh, square roots of 5x minus 2 square roots of 5x. Okay, how do you combine those? Well, they have the same radicand and index, which is 2, so combine them. So you have the quantity 3 minus 2 times root of 5x. Okay, so 3 minus 2 obviously is 1, and that's just times root 5x. So the answer is root 5x, or the square root of 5x. Now, in the second example here, uh, 6x squared times root 7 plus 4x times root 5. You can't combine them. They're different radicands. Okay, so this is not possible. Even though they're both square roots, the radicands are different. So you can't you different. You can't you can't combine them using the distributive property there. So that's not possible. Lastly, here's another example. You have the same radicands, but then you have different indexes. So 12 times the cube root of 7xy minus 8 times the fifth root of xy. Yes, they're both odd, but 3 and 5 are not equal, so they're different indexes. You can't combine those either. So this is just an example here, number one, of the sum and difference properties, that distributive property. All right, so uh, what is the simplified form of the expression root 12 plus root 75 minus root 3? So this is where you have to use that second part of the essential understanding and simplify before you add. Right now you would say, well, they're all roots, they're square roots, but I can't combine them because they all have different radicands. So the idea becomes, can, you eat, can each term have a radicand of 3? And the reason why I picked, chose the radicand of 3 because it's the smallest radicand. So can I rewrite the other radicals? as a root 3. So let's check it out. So 12 is 2 squared times 3. 75 is 25 times 3 and minus root 3. And notice how these are perfect squares. I wanted perfect squares here because this is a square root. So I get 2 root 3 plus 5 root 3 minus 3 roots, 3 uh, root 3, excuse me. So now you can use that distributive property rule, okay? We're combined like terms, 2, 5, and negative 1. So 2, 5, negative 1, all times root 3. And that just becomes 6 root 3. So that's our final answer, 6 root 3. So be careful. Don't just look at this and say, can't combine them. Different radicands. Simplify under the rad radical first. Now, what is the product of each radical expression? So this is the only new thing. So we have 4 plus 2 root 2 times the quantity 5 plus 4 root 2. Well, these are two binomials, so we're going to actually just use the um, box method. So I have 4 2 root 2 on one side and 5 and 4 root 2 on the other side. And then I take the area of each box. 5 times 4 is 20. Then you have two, 5 times 2 root 2, which is 10 root 2. 4 times 4 is 16 root 2. And 4 times 2 is 8. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which becomes 2. So 8 times 2 is 16. I wrote all my terms here, and then I color coordinate them to say, okay, well, 20 and 16 make 36, plus 16 root 2. Okay, in the second example, 5 minus root 7, that quantity times 5 plus root 7. These are conjugates, so just square the first term and the last term and make sure there's subtraction. So that's what I've done here. 
5 squared is 25. Square root of 7 squared, that undoes the square of the radical, so it just becomes 7. So the total is 18. The box method would have shown you the same thing, but be careful with those conjugates. Those are really important uh, later on. So just try to follow that rule. Square the first term and the second term and put subtraction in between them. Last example here is where we use conjugates, okay? You have 3 root 2 divided by root 5 minus root 2. Can't combine these because they're different radicands. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So that becomes root 5 plus root 2 over root 5 plus root 2. So essentially I'm multiplying by 1, right? Same thing divided by each other. That's just 1, really. So I haven't changed the problem. Now I combine like terms. So I cross, or I, excuse me, I distribute the 3 root 2 here across. We multiply straight across. Remember, conjugates square the first term and the second term and just square them both and have that subtraction between them. I distribute the 3 root 2 through, and that's what you see here. 3 root 2 times root 5 plus 3 root 2 times root 2 all over 3 because 5 minus 2 is 3. The square and the square roots undo each other. And this becomes 3 root 10 plus 6, okay? So you have 3 root 10 is right here, and then this is 3 times root 4, which is 2. Root 4 is 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. And I factor out a 3 of all this, and I'm left with root 10 plus 2. So that is binomial radical expressions, multiplying and dividing, and some addition. If you guys have any questions or comments, type them below, or you can email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov. Thanks.